bless them this past year. And I pray, Father, that they will give you thanks, give you praise, because you've been good to them. And so I pray, Lord, as they look forward to another year, uh, that they will look forward to it, living for Jesus Christ. And so bless them, continue to bless their families in a special way. And we will continue to give you the praise, the honor, the glory, like we do to you and you and them. We ask these things and pray this prayer. Because he that endures to the end, that is the one going to be saved. He's not the one who's running this race fast. We can't manage this race in feet. We're running with feet. We have to go mentally, holding on to the end. So I know many of you have heard about the Lisbon earthquake. Great earthquake. Lisbon is the capital city and the largest in Portugal. We know, as I said, we know the sign of Christ coming, but we don't know when he will appear. And when we see these signs, we all need to get comfort from them, and we need to strengthen our hopes. That is the most we can do. We are living in the last days, one of my good friends would call it, the washing and the ironing time, when we get to our lives straight with God, get to our lives straight with one another. Perfect earthquake that was ever recorded is commonly known as the Lisbon earthquake. It is it extended to the greater part of Europe, Africa, America. It is also felt in Greenland, in West Indies, and of course Jamaica is a part of West Indies, the Jamaican, you listen up. In the island of Madeira, in Norway, in Sweden, in Great Britain, and in Ireland. That is how this earthquake is being felt. It says it is pervaded an extent of not less than 4 million square miles. In Africa, the shock was almost as severe as in Europe. A great part of Algeria was destroyed. And this is the capital city of Algeria. It is located, I look up this thing because I like when I speak to make it simple, make it clear, make it plain that everybody who here will have a better understanding because I don't know where this place Algeria is, so I look it up. It's on the uh, Mediter uh, Mediterranean Sea and it is the border of Morocco. And Morocco is one of those islands that are off the coast of, off the coast of Africa, right? So a great part of this earthquake was felt there and it destroyed it destroyed a big part of that city. On a short distance from Morocco, a village containing eight to 10,000 inhabitants was swallowed up. And that's a lot of people, eight to 10,000. So here we have this destruction in Algeria, and then we have it in Morocco. Short distance from Morocco. A vast or mighty wave swept over the coast of Spain and Africa engulfing cities and causing great destruction. In Spain and Portugal, the shock manifested its extreme violence. So that means, simple meaning, in Spain and in Portugal, it's like it's raging there. In Cadiz, a city in Spain, it said the following wave was to be 60 feet high. So here we have so here it goes, 60 feet over the city, 60 feet high. Some of the largest mountains in Portugal were shaken to the very foundation. 
And he says some of them were split at the summit, at the top. It was split. And then this massive thing was rent. And this thing was overthrown right down into the valley. It was thrown down into the valley. And it says flames issued from these mountains. I can imagine that some of them were maybe volcano under them for the flames to be issuing out of them like that. But it wasn't a pretty sight. It said at Lisbon a sound like thunder was heard on the ground. And immediately after that, the violent soup came and a great part of this, that city was there. In the space of six minutes, just six minutes, 60,000 people perished. Six minutes, 60,000 people perished. And what I'm giving you comes from the great controversy because that is one book I'm reading through now, so you can look it up. The sea first retired and laid beardy dry. It then rolled in 50 feet or more above the ordinary level. And as I've said before, so you imagine the sea, the sea, it goes back. To me, you can just picture like you're going to throw a stone or something. In order to get it fling very far, you have to go way back to get a far a distance in the front. There are a good view in the front. It's the same thing with the sea. It rolls back. And then when it came in over 50 feet or more of its ordinary level, so it must go over dry land. And when it go over dry land, people swallowed up. That's the reason why this, just in modern days, they say this, this little girl, she learned about how when there would be a tsunami, how the sea receded first, and then it come forward. So they were on vacation. You may have heard the story. They were on vacation. And the little girl noticed that the sea is going way back. And she started to tell the people she learned about that in school. I think she said she learned about it in England. That a tsunami is going to come. They should all run, run, run. So sure enough, that little girl warned them and they were able to escape. So when you see the sea go way back and people go out, you see nice shells. It's not going to be like that. You better move from that place. Anyhow, it said the sea first retired and laid beer dry. It then rolled in 50 feet or more above its ordinary level. In Lisbon, another catastrophe was new. This quarry was built entirely of marble. Very expensive, they say. And it was uh, built there like, well, immense and expensive. So it says a great concord of people went there for safety. This quarry was built of marbles, very expensive place. So they're running this quarry and believing it's going to be safe from ruin. Because when there's an earthquake, things coming from above, building can fall on you, and the earth can open up. So if that, you're not much running you can run to, because the earth can open up and things can fall on you. Right? So two ways there is trouble. So here this quarry, they all run inside this quarry to get rescue. But suddenly, the quarry shake down with all the people on it. And he said there was not one dead body that floated out of it. So when that thing went down, nobody escaped. Nothing the dead body didn't come back up to surface. The shock of the earthquake was instantly followed by a fall of every church and convent. So I wanted to picture these nice churches all around, this convent. convent. But, it happened on a Sunday. Right, right. Thank you, sis. So it says every church and convent fall. Almost all the large public buildings and more than one quarter of the houses were laid flat also. So all these big buildings and in these cities they have massive structures up there going up. And they all came right down. In about two hours after the shock, fire broke out in different quarters and raged with violence for nearly three days. This that the city was completely desolate. So here we have earthquake, all sort of thing happened, already disaster, and then fire broke out. And the fire lasted for almost three days. Because remember now, some of these places have gasoline pipe running underneath to, to warm the place, right? And then now you find out when the earthquake, all these are broken up, so it's easy for everywhere to go up in flame. So here this fire raged for almost three days and everything was completely, that city was completely desolate. The earthquake happened on a holiday 
When the churches and convents were full of people, very few escaped. So it happened on a holiday. And I know more people will go to church on holidays than ordinary. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. So you will hear them go to church Easter Sunday. They never go to church no other time, but they'll go on Easter Sunday and they'll go some other little holiday, wherever it be. They all go there during that time. So during this time, it happened in an holiday. And I can just imagine that some that never have been in church in these places. Because sin don't lie in one place. Anything happen there can happen over here. So if in my country they go on certain days, it be the same thing. So he swept these people down. The terror of the people was beyond description. No tears were shed. And I can't, it's more than tears. So it's more than tears. Nobody cried. It was beyond tears. It says, they ran either and thither. I'm thinking, what is this either and thither when people run? It says, in various directions, especially in disorganized way, in various places, from place to place, in different places, in different directions. So you're running, you don't know where you're running to, but you're running. Yeah. You're running here, then you see something, you're running there. You're just running in various directions. You run either and thither. And astonishment, beating their faces, and breast crying. Miss Mr. Rico Cordial, the world is at end. So when they when they beat their face, I just imagine them, oh, oh my, you know something like this, like you're frightened. I think this is what is it. And when they beat their breast, they say that it is the when you beat your chest like that, the nearest thing to a heart attack happen right there when you do that. So here they cry, Mr. Mr. Rico Cordial. The world is at end. And I look up this word too, because I don't know what this means. And it means merciful. And then it's, that word is coming from another word that means pity. So it's like, Lord, me, the world is coming to an end. Alright? This delirious is an acute state of mind characterized by restlessness, illusion, incoherence, something like madness or insane. So that is how the people were feeling. And this was another part that touched me. Mothers forget their children and run to and fro about with their crucifix. So you forget you have little run, look, look, little baby, dear little children around. You're running up and down with your crucifix. It says, many run to the churches for protection, but in vain. The sacraments were exposed, or the ceremony, the rituals. Poor creatures embrace the altar. Now they run up to the altar and they embrace the altar. But the images, the altar, the people, everybody was buried in a common ruin. We were buried in a common because all these things buried them right there. It has been estimated that 90,000 people lost their lives during that time, that fatal day. 90,000 in one day, 90,000 lost their lives. Now I would like us to turn to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2. And he said, But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeared? For he is a refiner fire, and like a fuller soap. And Malachi asked the question, Who shall abide, who shall stand? David answered the question in Psalms 24 and verse 4. Psalms 24 and verse 4. He that had clean hands and pure heart, clean hands and pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That is the person who is going to stand when the other thing comes around. And we all know that the coming of the Lord the coming of the Lord joy at night. But we can give God thanks that we have time now to make our calling and election sure. We have family members, we have loved ones, we have friends who have no interest in the word of God. But that doesn't mean that we should be discouraged or cast down. I know uh, my husband and I will try to have brush basically like every morning. So I know somebody always call. Many times this person call in the morning. <laughs> and they ask, Kiva, what type of church you are? You are every day you have this church. 
They think we should only have church in church. <laughs> we, have to have, we have to have God in our home. We have to, same thing we do in church, we can do it in the home. Read our Bible, pray, pray on behalf of our loved one, intercede on behalf of our loved one. We can do everything that we do in church in our home. The time is short. All we can do is to pray for our families and our friends. They may not want to hear it, but at least we pray and make sure that we give them words of encouragement. That is one another thing. Give them words of encouragement, and if they are very close to you, you let them know, I am praying for you. I am praying for you. I pray for some people, they don't even know that I'm praying for them. But one day, one day, the Lord, I make a prayer list <clears throat> years ago. I got up. When I woke up in the morning, if this thought came in my mind, if, if my people should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from my way. And I said, where in the Bible is that text? So I found it. And then I said, okay, I'm, I make up, I started to pray for people. I started praying for people. I have a long prayer list. And I start to pray for all those people I can remember that come across my mind. The name is on the list. So I was telling to telling somebody, and the person says, I have to put a Bible text to every name. And when I put a Bible text to every name, it's that thing become a burden. I don't even know when that lasts out. A Bible text. So each time I pray, I have to look up what Bible text go with his first name. If the Lord lays up on your mind to pray for somebody, go ahead and pray. You don't even have to tell people what you're doing. Because their advice sometimes just throws out everything. After the time, the, the thing has become so like, Bible Yes! The Lord didn't say five times a Bible text. I don't even know what they need, but I remember their face. Some of them, I remember their name. Pray for them. Say, and ask the Holy Spirit to work upon their heart. And to help them, I remember my brother, one of my brothers, he was 29 years old when he died and in an accident. And my friend came to me and she says, Kiva, you know, if somebody was praying for him at that time, would he, he would have been alive? Because the Lord, and she, and she explained everything to me. She used to read a lot. She explained it to me. Remember now, there are good and bad angels fighting for our souls. And Ellen G. White says it all depends on which side we are on wins the battle. So if I'm leaning towards the evil and I want evil, I, I get evil that side way. But if I'm leaning towards this, but can you imagine the battle is there fighting and I put my prayer in? And it says the angel will say, the bad angel will say to the good angel, you are. Uh, you have no right to help such and such a person. They did not ask for your help. And nobody interceded in their behalf. So you are forcing yourself upon them. So brought that picture home so clearly to me. So but if you pray for them, that's why even when I pray, I pray and I ask the Lord to pray for those who I pray for those who have no one to pray for them. I'm interceding on behalf. In that way, the, 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 it's open. They can, the angels will work. Everything will work. So explain it so beautiful to me. So all we have to do in, in, is to pray and to intercede. I am going to pray because I don't even remember I prayed before I begin. So I'm going to pray. And after maybe at the end of the lesson, we can come up with that mission story if we can get it online. If not, we are going to go straight on into the lesson study. Eternal God and most righteous Father, we are so thankful for your holy words. Lord, I just pray that none of us here in this building or who are on Zoom will be found running to the rocks and mountains in the last mm. days. I pray, Almighty God, that you will help us to make our calling and our election sure. I pray, dear Lord, that you help us to do your will. We know, dear Lord, that we are not working, but she says, these are they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to do what we need to do. Help us to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, as our personal Savior from sin. Cleanse our hearts, dear Lord. You promise to give us clean minds and pure hearts. Lord, you promise to take away this stony heart and to give us a heart of flesh. And dear God, and we are depending upon you to fulfill your words in us. Help us, dear Father, that we will be called, and when our names are being called, we'll be found worthy to enter in, to stand with thee. Again, we are begging you, dear Father, please write your names one more time in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, I pray that you will not remove it, but help us, dear Lord, to do what we have to do in case there is a decision to be made. Thank you, dear Lord, for your Holy Spirit that is pleading in our lives. I'm thankful, dear Father, for your words of encouragement. I know that the time is coming that we can either run 
back and forth, but we can look up to thee and by faith we claim it. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And as we are going into the Bible today, let's study, dear Father. Please give us wisdom, give us knowledge. Most of all, give us understanding and help us to apply all that need to apply to our lives. We thank you. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.